Hi guys, welcome to Paragon Cars. My name's Tom, and today we're going to be reviewing some very different Mercedes A-Classes, one of which costs £10,000 more than the other, and we're going to find out whether it's worth it or not. Before we start the video, if you could give it a like and then subscribe to our channel, that would be a massive help to us, and it would allow us to keep producing this awesome automated content. Let's go. First up, the hatchback. This is a 2018 Mercedes A180 Sport that's on the market for £17,949. We'll talk about the cost of finance later, but first let's take a look around the car. In the engine bay, you've got a 1.5 litre diesel with 134 horsepower and 200 newton metres of torque. Doesn't really sound like a lot, and it isn't to be honest, but it's enough to get this car to 60 in about 8.5 seconds. Not that fast, but good enough for everyday use. In the front you get these regular manually adjustable seats and standard digital displays. As standard you get a sat nav and a reverse camera and that's pretty much all this car has. The base door trim is this carbon fibre effect plastic which does actually look pretty good. What doesn't look so good though is the amount of piano black plastic in the dash and the centre console. Despite the amount of black plastic in this cabin even the base screens look pretty nice and there's a good resolution to them and plenty of customization. So you can get the screens looking exactly how you like them. The uh, trackpad in the middle is fairly easy to use as well and it gives you some haptic feedback whilst navigating through the different options. In the back there's a good amount of legroom, certainly more than the older A-Class. The seat in front is in my driving position and I've got a good amount of room to move my legs around so I can get comfortable. In terms of headroom there's not much to worry about, I'm 5'11 and there's plenty of space for me in the back. Uh, but without the panoramic roof, it does feel a bit dark in here, so if you've got kids and they tend to get car sick, you might want to option that for the car. In the boot, there's about 370 litres of space, which is plenty for a weekly shop or a couple of large suitcases. Before we go for a drive in this A180, let's take a look at the key differences this other A-Class has. This is a slightly newer 2019 A200 saloon. This car is in the AMG line Premium Plus trim, meaning it's got pretty much every option ticked. The engine is actually different though, so it's got a 1.3 litre petrol with 160 horsepower instead of 134 and 250 newton metres of torque instead of 200. We'll find out whether it feels any quicker than the diesel on the road, but first let's take a look at the inside. In the front you can immediately tell this is a higher specification car. This has the uh, fully upgraded 10.2 inch screens, which certainly add a nice level of luxury I think. You get a slightly different seats that are now heated plus electrically adjustable and a steering wheel with metal instead of plastic trim. Even the air vents are made of a slightly nicer plastic and the door cards have some nice brushed aluminium trim on them as well as some nice Alcantara. There's also ambient lighting around the cabin further adding some of that Mercedes luxury. In the back there isn't actually much difference apart from the panoramic roof which does add quite a lot more light into the cabin making it slightly easier to travel in the back of. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference in terms of headroom, which is actually pretty surprising being a saloon car. Then in terms of boot space, there's actually more than the hatchback at 420 litres, but of course being a different shape, if you're carrying anything big and square like a washing machine or a fridge, it's going to be a lot more difficult or impossible in this car, so keep that in mind. Now we've had a look at both of these cars on the inside, let's take them for a drive and see what difference is out on the road. Okay, first up we've got the A180. Now I haven't driven either of these cars yet, so this is kind of a blind test. Um, but initial impressions, this is definitely better than the older A-Class. And because this car's got the 17 inch wheels, there's quite a lot of sidewall to the tire. So it's pretty comfortable going over bumps. Um, never really feels unsettled. Uh, the only downside is this car has torsion beam rear suspension, whereas the A200, has a multi-link rear axle which basically means the suspension is fully independent so when you go over bumps in this a180 it can feel a little bit jiggly at times but it's by no means bad driving around town this car is really really easy the steering's nice and light um, and the pedals are really easy to adjust the brake pedal there's quite a lot of travel before you get into it which is a bit disconcerting um, but it's definitely not too bad you also get hill hold assist as standard in these cars which means you can take your foot off the brake when you're at a standstill and that will allow you to just sit in the car without doing anything.
In terms of parking, even this standard car is an absolute piece of cake. You get a reverse camera of standards and then it's got lines telling you where you need to go. The car is quite small as well, so you're never gonna be in need of parking sensors too much. And there you go, in in one go, pretty easy. Coming out of junctions is also really easy in this car. Gearbox is much less laggy than the older A-Class, so you're never sort of putting your foot down and then waiting for the car to go. It just goes when you put your foot down, pretty nice. Okay, we're gonna reset the trip computer now so we see what kind of MPG we get driving around town and on the motorway. Because this is a diesel, it's gonna be slightly more rattly than the petrol equivalent, um, but it, it's okay. I mean, you don't get as much noise as you did in the older A-Class for sure. Going around roundabouts, even in eco mode, this car doesn't hesitate to move off the line. And the steering is nice and light, so going around corners is made pretty easy. This car does come standard with the cruise control, which does make it a bit easier to drive around town and on the motorway. Even though this is a base model car, you do actually get four different drive modes. So you've got your Eco, which we're in at the moment, Comfort, and then Sport. We're gonna put it in Sport. This will hold onto the gear slightly longer and it'll sharpen up the throttle response a bit. It'll even add a little bit of weight to the steering. So we're coming up to a national speed limit sign now, so we can put our foot down and then see how fast we get up to 70 miles an hour. Certainly not a quick car, but it's okay for everyday use really. You're never gonna do any seriously sporty driving in this. Coming onto the motorway, even in eco mode, it's got enough poke to get you up to the speed limit. It's by no means fast, but it's certainly quick enough for everyday use. Initial impressions on the motorway, because we've got the 17 inch wheels, like I mentioned before, there's pretty much zero road noise. I'm sure in the A200 there's going to be a little bit more. One thing I am noticing though, is there is a noticeable amount of wind noise coming from sort of around here. Not very bad, certainly better than cars lower in the class, um, but it's not quite the same as an Audi A3. These cars also get lane assist as standard, so if I start wandering at my lane, it'll actually shake the steering wheel just to let me know. We're gonna do a short stint on the motorway just to see what kind of MPG we can get. But as you can see, we're already well into the 50s. Whilst we're waiting on those figures, we may as well talk about some of the other interesting things about this car. In terms of interior quality, you get pretty nice materials inside. Everything's kind of squidgy where you'd expect it to be squidgy, but lower down you do start to get some scratchier plastics, um, but they're actually pretty good, um, especially compared to the older A-Class. On the dash, this like perforated rubber stuff is uh, squishy as well. The only thing I don't like is the amount of black plastic around the screens. Driving position is actually really good in this car. You can get really nice and low. The steering wheel has plenty of adjustment in it and the seats have this little extendable base so you can get your legs nice and comfortable. In the automatic version of this car, you get something called a dual clutch gearbox, which means you get two different clutches and very fast changes, similar to the VW DSG system. At 70 miles an hour, you're sitting just under 2000 revs. So even though this is quite a small engine, you don't feel like you're wringing its neck when you're going above 60 miles an hour.
even though this is the base model, creature comforts are actually pretty good. You get dual zone climate control as standard, and even though these are the base model screens, they're pretty easy to use. Um, certainly not as good as the 10.2 inch ones. The resolution's not quite as good, and obviously having all this black plastic around them isn't that nice to look at. But they're pretty easy to live with, to be honest. You don't get auto dimming as standard, so you do have to flip the rear view mirror down if someone's headlights are on full beam behind you. Which is a bit annoying, even though this is a base model car. I mean, it is still a Mercedes. Over that short stint on the motorway, we managed to eke out 62.7 mpg, which is certainly an impressive figure. I think if you drove it even slower than 70 miles an hour, you'd probably see into the 70s, maybe even more. Very impressive. Okay, we're going to swap over to the A200 now, but I have to say for a base model Mercedes A180, it's certainly got enough specifications in it to keep me happy. On a long journey, it's very comfortable, and it gets very good gas mileage at 62.7 mpg. Right, let's swap over to the A200. Okay, we've switched over to the A200 now, and the first thing I've noticed is that being a petrol engine, you get a lot less noise into the cabin and it immediately feels like a more premium car to drive. Also having these really nice widescreen displays really helps with getting the information across to you as a driver. The steering wheel does actually have a slightly nicer leather on it and it's perforated so you get a little bit more grip around the 9 and 3 positions. Parking this car is easier than parking the A180 because you've got a slightly sharper screen so you can see all the finer details and you also have all round parking sensors so you know exactly where the car is at all times. One thing you do notice is going over bumps. This car does feel slightly more sure-footed and doesn't jiggle about as much. That'll be due to the fact this car is on lowered stiffened suspension. Also at the rear, you don't get a torsion beam, you get fully independent shock absorbers and springs. So it stops you from wallowing side to side on the road. I've reset our trip computer now, so we'll be able to see what kind of MPG we get around town and on the motorway. I don't think it's going to be as good as the A180, but this engine does feel slightly more refined. I haven't put my foot down yet, so I don't know how much quicker it is, but I'm sure it'll feel a little bit faster. The seats in this car, because they're made of Alcantara and leather, the Alcantara does actually hold you in place a little bit more than the material in the A180. So if you're going around corners quickly, you're not moving about as much. Plus the car is also flatter because of the lowered suspension. So you feel a bit more sure footed when you're going at speed. This car also has a wireless charger. So I've just put my iPhone down there and it's just started charging now. It's also made of rubber. So the phone doesn't rattle around too much, which is certainly better than a lot of other cars with wireless chargers. The steering in this car feels quite similar to the one in the A180. It does feel a little bit more precise. I think the suspension setup does actually change how the steering feels slightly in this car. Yeah, already I can feel the engine has a little bit more punch. It does respond a little bit more quickly as well. speed limit zone. Again, it'll downshift, hold the gears for longer, steering will be a little bit heavier. I've noticed it feels even more direct than the A180 and the throttle response is improved even more. Coming off roundabouts, this engine does have a little bit more uh, 
pizzazz to it. There's uh, quite a lot of fake noise going into the cabin as well. Uh, but yeah, it does it does feel quite a lot nippier than the diesel engine. But you can see that's already destroyed our fuel economy down into the 24s. We're going to be joining the motorway in a minute, so I'm going to put it back into eco mode. And we'll see what MPG we get. As responsive as the A180 is, for a diesel car, it's just not going to be quite as good as a petrol. And getting onto the motorway and driving around town, this petrol car does just have that little bit more energy getting off the line compared to the diesel. And it certainly feels smoother and quieter even when you're running at speed. Visibility is equally as good out of both cars because the cabin is pretty much no different. Uh, the A pillars are nice and thin, the B pillars, mm, they're quite thick, so you do have to lean forwards a bit to check your blind spot, and neither of the cars have a blind spot monitoring system. Okay, we've set the cruise control to 70 miles an hour now. We're going to do about 15 minutes on the motorway, just like we did with the A180. We're on the same road, and we're going to see what MPG we get. I don't know if this is just a placebo effect, but this car definitely feels quieter inside. I'm getting quite a lot less wind noise from this window, and a lot less from the rear window as well. Watch the A180 and then watch this, and then tell me in the comments below if you think it's quieter in here. I'd like to know your thoughts. Even sitting in the front seats, you do notice the panoramic roof lets a lot more light in, and it feels much more airy inside this cabin. It certainly feels less cramped and small inside here, which is very nice. Another optional extra that I definitely think is worth the money is the 10.2-inch screens. They really do add a theatre to the cabin that just isn't there in the A180. They have a much better resolution than the standard screens, and they're much easier to read as you get a much wider view of the sat-nav, and you can see exactly where you are on the road. This particular car is riding on 18-inch wheels, and you don't really notice it, to be honest. The 17s feel really nice and comfortable. These just give you a little bit more control when you're on the motorway. There's a little less of a dead zone in the center of the steering, um, but it certainly doesn't feel like the car's more bumpy or louder inside. If anything, it feels a lot quieter. But in terms of engine noise coming through to the cabin, there's a lot less in this. I think that's purely just because it's a petrol. Diesels are always gonna be noisier. Because this car's got electric seats, it's much easier to move them when you're driving down the motorway compared to manual seats. They're also heated, and then you've got a memory function as well, so if you and your partner have different seating positions, you can just press one button and it will move to the desired position. Another big difference with these upgraded displays is the amount of customization you have. So you can actually change So you actually have a couple more options, as well as Classic and then Sport. As well as Classic and Sport, you've also got Progressive, which is the one I was just using before, and then you've got Understated, which basically turns pretty much everything off, and then you just get all the essential information, so just like your speed and then whatever the time is. It looks quite nice, but we're going to switch back to Progressive, because I think that's my favourite view. See at the moment we're at 37.7 mpg not bad so far but quite a way off the diesel equivalent okay we're coming off the motorway now we're going to take it round some turns and see what the handling's like compared to the a180 let's put the car back into sport But I didn't mention earlier, this actually changes the electronic stability control, so it lets a bit of slip happen in the car. Another difference you get is actually slightly nicer gear shift paddles. Um, 
they're not that like really cheap plastic they're this like nice silvery plastic instead right let's take it around the corner yeah this certainly feels like it has more stability going quickly around the corner And if you're one for fake engine noises, this is definitely the car for you. <laughs> uh, I think it thinks it's an A45. Back up to 70. Okay, let's put it back in eco and drive back the other way. Whilst the interior quality of the A180 was very good for a base model car, this A200 certainly has quite a few things that just lift up the interior a little bit more. When we were doing our walk around video I mentioned that this has got slightly different air vents. So they are actually made of a, a different material and they have this nice click when you turn them. They also have ambient lighting in them, I don't know if, they can, if you can see that on the camera, but uh, they have this little blue ring around the edges and you can actually customise what colour that is. You've then got this brushed aluminium trim which certainly lifts up the interior quality of this car a little bit. All the squidgy material on the doors and the dash are exactly the same and then you've still got this sort of rubbery stuff with holes in uh, which does feel quite nice glove box um, this bit's plastic but there is actually felt further back in the glove box so nothing rattles around inside you've got the same dual zone climate control and then the only difference is this car has a couple more buttons down here that weren't in the a180 On a long drive, this car would actually be slightly nicer to live with, even though it doesn't get quite as good fuel economy. It doesn't wander about on the road as much, purely because it's got larger wheels and it's got a slightly more advanced suspension setup. Okay, so we've done our stint on the motorway now and we managed to get 47.9 miles to the gallon. It's about 15 mpg less than the diesel equivalent. I think for a car with a little bit more power and a little bit more of a zippy feel to it, it's definitely a pretty good figure. Um, I think if you drove even slower, you could probably get this above 55 mpg if you wanted to. But for 70 miles an hour, 47.9 mpg is pretty good. The brakes in this car certainly feel a little bit sharper than the A180. You do actually get different pedals as well. You get metal ones instead of normal rubber pedals. In terms of finance, the A180 with a zero pound deposit, you're gonna get that car for 279 pounds a month. Now the car is one year older than this car and it does have a few more miles on it, um, but that is certainly a very cheap price compared to what this is. This car is going up for 27,949 pounds and the finance on this, you're looking about two and a half grand down 399 pounds a month so over 100 pounds a month more expensive but the biggest question is is it worth it and it's a hard one this i think if you've got the money and you want something that's going to be economical actually quite fun to drive and have that wow factor that the a180 just doesn't have I think it's worth it. I think if you do a lot of miles and you're not really a person to take a lot of care out of your car, you know, you keep rubbish in the seats and all that kind of stuff, I think the A180 is definitely going to be the better car for you because it's pretty much just as quiet as this and it'll get a little bit better fuel economy on a long run. My personal preference though, I would probably go for this, purely because it just has that Mercedes luxury feel to it, whereas the A180 feels kind of like a more normal hatchback. 
as you can see this car also has hey mercedes which is pretty annoying really every time you say mercedes it thinks you're trying to talk to it yep just like that what can i do for you cancel there we go it's gone away now this car also has auto folding mirrors a180 doesn't have that okay we're almost back at the dealership now we managed to get 45.6 mpg overall which is about 15 mpg less than the a180 certainly a pretty good figure for a petrol car um, it could be better of course as i said before if you drive a little bit slower on the motorway you're definitely going to save a little bit more fuel but overall very good car if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to our channel to see some more awesome automotive content i'll see you on the next one goodbye